welcome everybody to this um, webinar where I, as your host, will be presenting to you um, an information session for digital marketing, um, customer engagement, social media, planning and analytics. Um, a great program of which I am um, involved in as a course leader. Um, whilst we get ready for other participants to join over the next minute or so, if you could identify the chat, find the chat um, facility, um, access chat, select all panelists and attendees in the um, two field, and let, let me know from where you're listening, watching, um, and so forth. Um, again, my name's Alex Brown, and I'm um, broadcasting from um, the UK, um, southwest Cornwall um, and it's a little bit grey and dull out there I should add um, but welcome and I see some already whoop welcome from Brussels very good Sheer. welcome from Israel um, welcome Alexandra from Bulgaria again select all panelists and attendees if you can see that option that would be great Michelle welcome from Taipei, even though you're Italian, fantastic. Subic, welcome from India. Again, try to select all panelists and attendees. Hello, um, Anna um, from Panama. Very good, Gabrielle from Argentina. Again, in the two field on the chat, select all panelists and attendees. We will be getting going very shortly as a few more people um, plan to arrive. Um, so Gabrielle, welcome from Argentina. Um, I just moved the slide deck on a little bit just to show some of the logistics of today's session, which will last for one, one hour. Uh, we will be finished, complete um, at the top of the next hour before two o'clock UK time um, and so forth. Um, I, I see a couple of you trying to raise your hand. Unfortunately, we don't, we're not going to use that facility for this particular webinar. If you have questions, um, you have two choices. You can go to the Q&A and pose your question there or to the chat room and, and pose your question there. The Q&A, the question, um, it, it's better for, for questions in the Q&A because that way they, they stay there, they persist, and I'll make sure I get to them before the end of this particular webinar. Um, so welcome Kathleen from the United States. Again, try to select all panelists and attendees. Looks like we've got a really good international audience, which is very symptomatic of this course. He Chin, um, welcome from South um, Seoul. Um, in Korea. Um, very welcome. Again, try to select all panelists and attendees. That way everyone can see your contribution to the chat. Um, otherwise, it's just me and my program support folks from Emeritus um, and so forth. So, okay, what I will do, I will begin to get started now. And oh, good. Well done, Alexandra. Um, very good. Did it from Bulgaria. Um, so I truly appreciate that. I spent um, a week in Bulgaria, in your beautiful country, in um, Sofia and um, south of Sofia at the American University of Bulgaria. Um, okay, um, so th this sort of explains that. Make sure to select all panelists and attendees as you submit any notes to chat. Use the Q&A to ask any specific questions that I don't address um, very clearly in this particular web webinar. Okay, very good. Um, so, what we're going to do today, I'm going to introduce you to, um, to, to the faculty um, for, for this particular course. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about you and Emeritus sort of generally. Then give a course overview um, for the course that um, uh, the Digital Marketing Strategies course, of which again I'm a course leader. And then have time at the end for a Q&A. So that's the plan for today. And like I mentioned earlier, we will be done um, within the hour. Um, very good. Um, Gabrielle, I'll get to that question at the end. But yeah, if you have no marketing experience at all or no um, ground formation, um, some of the issues might seem a little bit disconnected from your worldview, um, but we as course leaders do try to make those connections. So, so to make the material accessible, I should say, to as wide a, an audience as, 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 as we can. Um, and that's kind of our job as course leader. But I'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. And if the question isn't really answered, you can ask a follow up question um, directly at the end. But thanks for asking that. Um, okay, so that's the schedule for um, the, the next hour. Um, so this is 
a course offered by Professor David Rogers, who is a faculty of executive education at Columbia Business School in New York, um, the United States. And as you will well know, I assume that Columbia Business School is a very um, highbrow um, university, one of, one of the best in the world, let alone the best in New York City, um, and so forth. Um, and um, Professor David Rogers is well known in this field of digital marketing, digital strategy more broadly. He's authored two books on this topic. He does a lot of public speaking around the world, um, keynote speech, speaking and so on and so forth. He is a thought leader in this space. The, one of the two books that this course particularly follows is The Network is Your Customer Five Strategies in a Digital um, age. You don't need to buy the book to participate in the course and actually a lot of the material that we use from the book um, is available in the modules and, and the videos that we offer as part of the teaching. Um, but um, for instance, Gabrielle, you might want to buy the book to, to sort of have that sort of additional context and comfort and additional cases and so forth. Um, okay, so Professor Rogers is your faculty. As we teach the course, you will be connected with a course leader. And um, in the la I'm going to go through the course leaders that we use for this current run of this course, which we're, we're about finishing up. Um, and from course to course, we typically use the same course leader. So I'm hoping I'm still a course leader with my colleagues in the next course run. We serve as your sort of tutor, your, your um, advisor. Um, if you have problems and concerns with the course material, we provide feedback and we do a bunch of other stuff, but that's our role. Um, so as a course leader for Emeritus, um, I've, I've now um, participated in this course for nine sessions over a year and a half. So each course is sort of a 10 week period and so on and so forth. I've actually taught digital marketing for lots of lots of years, not at Columbia University, um, Columbia Business School, but the University of Delaware. I was actually one of the first teachers of this subject matter back in the 1990s. So that was quite exciting before Google was born and Apple was still a sort of struggling um, upstart. I've worked on a lot of e-commerce projects over the years. My main focus and interest is in online um, communities. Um, and I've established uh, pretty rigorous on, on my communities in sort of the horse welfare space, as well as MBA missions and so forth, right? Um, so somewhat of as a practitioner, as well as an educator. Uh, my fellow course leaders, Josh um, Whiten, um, who's also been a course leader on this course for a number of years, he's um, a consultant um, and a practicing consultant for a number of years, again, in this sort of digital marketing space. So super accomplished, super smart, um, and, and so on, so on and so forth. And you see the note at the top, it says Josh White and Hilton Hotel. So he'll be running a case study um, where we apply the course material that you're learning to particular cases. He runs the case study Hilton Hotels. For me, the case study is IKEA, the furniture um, brand. Um, another fellow course leader is Dimitris Kouripis. Um, he is also a um, consultant um, in the Digital Works Group, um, consulting in strategy, leadership, innovation, and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of experience, again, in digital strategy and in digital marketing. So um, we have hopefully three course leaders that sort of take the materials from Professor Rogers' course and help sort of bridge the gap and, 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 and facilitate your learning. That's, that's the um, plan. And then our fourth course leader focuses on simulation exercises you will undertake as part of this course. So you'll do two search, uh, two sort of simulation exercises. One is a search simulation where you get an imaginary budget and you're running Google ads and you're competing against your fellow classmates and so on and so forth to, to try to sell product and, you know, and, and make profit and, and, and so on and so forth. So there's the search simulation with Google ads, and then there's a um, social media simulation where you're running ads on the different social media platforms um, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, Michael T Tominaga um, is your course leader to help facilitate that, answer your questions and make sure that part of the class also runs um, smoothly. So why take this course? 
this sort of cartoon you see um, quite a lot. Hopefully it sort of potentially resonates with a few of you. What's the big campaign idea? We're doing digital, Facebook, YouTube, mobile app, Pinterest. What are we going to do in all these channels? I don't know, we'll figure it out later. The, the plan behind this course is to really help you think through this stuff in a strategic sense so that you can um, take the frameworks that we offer in the course and some of the tools and so on and so forth and apply real strategy, digital marketing strategy um, in, in, in your efforts, in, in your particular marketing um, efforts. So that's the plan. And um, okay, so let me um, tell you a little bit about Emeritus. So who's actually providing you this course? And we at Emeritus are providing you this course in co excuse me, in collaboration with Columbia um, Business School. So that's actually quite an honor for the likes of me as a course leader. Um, so that's very good. Um, so we partner, or Emeritus, I should say, so I work directly for Emeritus, partners with the best universities in the world to create online courses. So in this case, it's Columbia University. We also have partnerships with MIT, um, with Cambridge, with Berkeley Haas, and, and a variety of other sort of top tier type universities. Um, and we have, through this process, served over 30,000 students um, from across the world, um, not just in this course, but in the breadth of courses that we offer um, through Emeritus. And you see from, from the from the graph in front, you know, that represents the United States, Latin America, Europe, um, Middle East, North Africa, um, actually in, in, in Southern Africa too, um, APAC, India, there's um, Australia, various other countries are all represented. And as you introduce yourselves um, at the beginning um, in chat, you see some of that global representation. So. Um, I think it's one of the very fantastic things about a course like this is we can learn digital marketing strategy alongside folks from all around the world with very different contextual experiences. So what works with digital marketing strategy, let's say in, in, in China might be very different to what works um, in the United States, in Europe, in India, and so on and so forth. We can get a sense of that. Um, with a course like this. The other really cool thing about this course is the quality of um, professional experiences that, that come to the table. I mean, we, we have, and this is a graph from a recent course that I've undertaken, a recent one of this particular course, um, of the various levels of work experience um, in terms of number of years. So you see from this graph, um, you know, uh, you know, 16 percent is one to five years but you've got nine percent is more than 26 years 21 percent is um, at, at 15 years so um, lots of folks with lots of really substantial experience across lots of different industries too um, some directly in marketing and some at digital agencies trying to get a bit of a top up and, and so on and so forth but others um, engineering and strategy and various other things looking to get a toolkit and a tool set for digital marketing strategy. Um, so you're, you know, that 9% more than 26 years are, are going to be folks like me that have really seen the evolution of digital over lots of lots of years. That's very particularly interesting, I think. And then again, the 16%, the one to five years, those are the folks that probably do really cool things on um, some of these um, newly evolving social media channels and we can all learn um, from each other. So I think that's um, very, very cool. Um, so one of the things that's important for Emeritus is our completion rate. Um, well, let me seem to have moved the slide deck on. I apologize for that. Is our completion rate. So course completion rates at Emeritus courses runs around 85%. Um, percent. So what you find in some online courses is, is completion rates tend to be less so than in class courses, um, but we've tried to really um, adjust that um, dynamic 
and we use a variety of different tools to teach this course, right? So, um, and I'll go through each of the boxes and explain them very quickly. Content from leading academic institutions. So we're talking Columbia Business School, Professor David Rogers. That's the content for this course. It's not my content as a course leader, it's Professor David Rogers' is content. We have guest lectures. So we, we run a, 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 a several webinars and I'll show you some, some of the titles of those um, shortly that becomes a really good way of providing some real contemporary stuff that's really interesting and important from a digital marketing strategy that then complements Professor David Rogers' um, um, sort of foundational content, um, as it were. Um, excuse me, let me, there we go. I have this thing on my screen, I have to keep moving around. Bite-sized learning. One of the really cool things about the content from Professor David Rogers is it comes in, um, you get a, one or two modules each week. And I'll look, we'll look at that, those in a minute. Um, and then in each module is several videos, maybe 10 videos per module. And the videos might vary in length from two and a half minutes to six or seven minutes. But really good bite-sized learning where Professor Rogers will be talking about a particular concept, within one of those videos, offering a particular case study to support that concept and so on and so forth. Um, so I think, yeah, quite frankly, it's a very good way um, to learn. Peer-to-peer um, -peer learning and feedback, we, we use discussion boards to have you folks try to engage with each other. So hopefully that becomes an interesting dynamic. And you know, there's lots to learn from each other, as I've mentioned before, folks in China having very different experiences to folks in the United States and Europe and so on and so forth, we can share those um, differences. Simulations, yes, we have two simulations. Again, the search marketing and social media marketing simulations from Stu Kent, managed by our fellow course leader, Michael. Um, and that real world case studies, that's where each of the course leaders introduces each of their case studies. So for me, it's Ikea. For Josh, it's, it's, um, it's um, yeah, Hilton Hotel, sorry. And for Demetrius, it's Lego and uh, mobile learning applications so you can do this off the mobile application of canvas and grading evaluation this is a pass fail course you just need to do the work and i'll show you how much work you have to do to pass um, in, in um, um, quite shortly um, okay completing the course you also participate in the emeritus network um, so this is a reasonably new initiative to try to bring everyone together that's completed the number of courses that um, emeritus offers and then that provides opportunities for further networking and various other things after the course so hopefully that becomes quite helpful also and i will say for our own particular course so digital marketing strategies um, we also have a linkedin group um, where we we um, invite um, participants that have completed the course to join the linkedin group to further share insights and ideas um, job opportunities, networking, and so on and so forth. So again, hopefully that is um, helpful. Okay, now down to the dirty detail, the course itself. Um, so um, this hopefully won't, won't bore you too much um, and, or get too technical in nature, but it's also quite important for you to be fully aware of what we are offering. Um, so digital marketing, customer engagement, social media planning and analytics, name of course is an online course your work expectation is going to be about two to four hours per week um, of learning effort. And you're going to be doing a variety of different things, watching webinars, watching videos, completing assignments, undertaking the simulations, participating in the discussion um, boards and attending the um, debriefs, which I'll talk about um, a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit later, obviously. Um, I say that two to four hours. Again, Gabrielle, for someone like yourself, it might be five to six hours. If you're having to do a little bit of extra sort of background prep, if you're less familiar with marketing. But, you know, as someone that's taught marketing for lots and lots of years, and that's what I have done, all I can tell you is marketing is simply common sense in a business context. So, um, you know, we're not, we're, it's not rocket science, quite frankly. So I think you can pick up the marketing frameworks, the, the, the basic marketing stuff. Um, very, very quickly. It's all about um, knowing your customers and pleasing your customers. That's kind of what marketing is, right? Um, we cover 14 modules of digital marketing in this course. So the digital advertising mix, looking at the key channels and principles, look at the 
five core behaviors of customers in the digital world. And this is sort of why you take Professor Rogers' course. It's these five customer behaviors. Um, so, you know, you could take digital marketing from lots of different people from all around the world, and they all have a different sort of angle or a take. Professor David Rogers is all about these five course behaviors. So it's the access, engage, customize, connect, and collaborate strategies. Um, from, from David Rogers, and I'll go through each um, in, a, in a minute, but basically his whole thesis is customers want to access, they want to engage, they want to customize, connect and collaborate, so, so on and so forth. Then it's five steps uh, um, process of planning, execution um, of uh, digital marketing strategy. I mean, we can all have lots of great ideas, but planning and execution becomes um, very fundamental to success. And then look at the future six phases of the near future um, digital uh, market. The end of it all, if you complete, um, which again, 85% of you should complete if you participate in the course, which I'm obviously hoping you will. Um, you get a verified digital certificate, which is awarded by Emeritus in collaboration with um, Columbia Business School Executive Education. So you get the brand of both um, to, um, to, to um, it's part of your certificate, right? Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's have a quick look now at um, what, um, excuse me, I have to do that real quick. Um, on completion, you should be able to understand the behaviors of today's customer networks. And again, that's what sort of really differentiates Professor Rogers's sort of approach to digital marketing, customer networks, and how to innovate product, service, and communications that customers um, seek. Use the concepts of best practices and tools for digital marketing to lead new initiatives in your organization. You will learn how to plan, implement, and measure digital strategies that are integrated within traditional marketing and business practices. And you'll notice all our case studies are traditional businesses that are transforming to digital, right? Think strategically to achieve a variety of goals by digital marketing, such as customer acquisition, customer loyalty, two very different things, right? Acquiring customers, maintaining loyalty amongst current customers, brand building, market entry, customer insight, and new product innovation, sort of a function of that collaborate strategy potentially. Reach digitally savvy audiences, build deep customer relationships and create new markets, products and business. So these are some of the objectives, some of the things that you're going to learn if you do choose to participate in this course. So let me spend a couple of minutes going over each of these five core strategies that Professor Rogers introduces um, in his um, work. Okay, so we have the access strategy. Um, or as a business, you design a strategy around customers' desire to access. So what you've got to think about is um, a customer um, is seeking a new product purchase, right? So in, in, for, for me, um, when we study IKEA, it's maybe they, they need to buy a, a new piece of furniture, right? Um, and how does a brand like IKEA make its content accessible? Um, throughout the customer purchase journey, right? So the customer purchase journey may go something like from awareness to interest, to consideration set, to purchase, to post-purchase, right? Um, and, and that's a traditional marketing model um, that you may well be familiar with from your very traditional marketing um, courses. But how is that model shifted as a result of digital? And how are brands like IKEA now truly able to provide access, regardless of where a customer is in that digital journey, at the awareness stage, at the consideration stage, and so on and so forth. So it's providing mobile applications, it's providing an informative website, various social media channels, um, and very, various other sets of content and information such that when I as a customer have a, a desire to do some search on, on, on identifying uh, what sort of new sofa I need to purchase, IKEA content becomes accessible to me, right? 
So that's your access strategy. The engage strategy is that content that I provide as a brand for my customers. Um, and that content can come in two or three different ways. It could be content that I try to design uh, to go viral. Um, so the people that receive that content then share it in their communities and so on and so forth. So we all hear these ideas of viral content. That's very good. Also, in the case of IKEA, I want to make that some of my content very practical. YouTube content on how to assemble a specific bookcase, the Billy bookcase or whatever it might be. Right. So not all content should be designed to be um, viral necessarily. Some of it truly um, practical. But customers want to engage uh, with their brand. Um, then you have the customized um, strategy. Um, so in this module, we talk about um, you know, market segmentation, target marketing, uh, the different um, targets, and then that sort of market segmentation down to the size of one. That's customization and that's personalization. And then you balance that with issues of privacy concerns and what brands are doing with data and these concerns are becoming more and more apparent and so forth, right? So that's your customized strategy. And then the connect strategy, which is actually quite honestly my favorite strategy. And I'm actually right after this um, webinar presentation, I'm doing a debrief, an assignment debrief for the current course on the connect strategy for IKEA. I absolutely love this stuff. And the, the idea of connect is customers now want to just talk with each other. And when they have a, an experience with the brands, they share that experience out there with each other, whether it's on their social media platforms, whether it's on Reddit, um, um, wherever it might be. But the point is brands have much less command and control over branding now as customers share content with each other. And as a customer, when I'm seeking out information about a particular brand, I often go to other customers, maybe through review sites, various other things to really understand if I should buy that particular product. So that's the connect strategy. And then finally, the collaborate strategy. And this is the desire potentially for customers to collaborate with brands to help build products and so forth. Um, and in, in this module, we talk about things like crowdsourcing and crowdfunding, and we look at various examples like Wikipedia and so forth, uh, which are just absolutely fascinating examples of, in, in that case, um, crowdsourcing. But how can individual brands like IKEA um, use co-creation strategies, as it were, to engage directly with customers on new product innovation and so on and so forth, right? Um, so those are the five strategies. And again, the fundamental reasons why you might um, choose to take Professor Rogers' course. I'm going to stop one second, just check the Q&A and have a quick look at what questions there might be. Um, see if I can answer them real quick. At some point, can you talk about the hard versus soft skills specifically? Um, what will a graduate be able to do upon completion that goes beyond conception? Peyton, that's a, um, a very good question. I think what we, we our goal in this course is... Um, you know, to teach you um, some fundamental sort of frameworks and, and ideas and, and thinking on how to approach digital marketing strategy. You'll use simulations to actually get your feet wet in, in actually doing and applying some of this stuff. And then hopefully the credential also then supports your readiness then um, to, to continue on in your career with a, with a focus on digital marketing um, strategy. So hopefully that answers that. If not, ask uh, the question again um, at the end of, of, of the webinar um, or ask a more, more nuanced question, I suppose. I'm wondering if the content of the course can be applied or if it works for digital media outlets rather than just regular e-commerce. Yeah, Nanny, if you could be a bit more um, clear in terms of what are the difference between digital media outlets or regular e-commerce, but the course should be broadly applied, I think, um, um, for sure. Um, I suppose you, you see the focus on, on regular e-commerce because at the end of the day, we're trying to sell product um, or at least a lot of brands are selling products or ideas. You could be a non-profit, you're selling an idea. Um, and so on and so forth. It absolutely applies to nonprofit, it applies to business to business, um, and so on and, and so forth. Is there a specific content on applying these concepts to small businesses and nonprofits? Yes, um, Kathleen, to that point, um, while our case studies are big business, the reason why the case studies are big businesses 
um, is easier for, for students to find content and information to answer questions in the assignments uh, for big branded businesses. Much harder to do that when it's a small business, there's less information to, to research online. That said, a lot of the content absolutely will apply to small um, business. I will now revert back to the presentation. I'll get um, back to more questions um, a little bit later, if that's all right with you all. Okay, so how do we teach this? We have various modules. Um, so module one from mass marketing to customer networks, that's fundamental to, to what this course is all about. Um, so best command and control um, from big brands now um, as customer networks are talking to each other, right? So that's the premise behind that. Module two, the digital advertising mix, looking at the key channels, the principles, all these social media channels and various other channels that are now available to us. And then modules three through seven, eight, nine, three through eight focus on these five customer behaviors in the digital world access engage customize connect and um, collaborate and then we look at some brand failures um, it's always good to to see that we can always learn learn a lot from from um, failures um, obviously um, best practices for brands on social networks making digital matters so this is getting into the numbers metrics return on investment um, for, for your campaigns and so forth, agile modeling, um, agile marketing too, I suppose. Five step process of planning and executing a digital marketing strategy. Um, so getting more strategic now, then organizational challenges and then looking into the future. So that's the flow um, of the course. And then for each um, week, we generally offer an additional webinar, again, to um, to provide some real current thinking in specific areas. Um, so um, that starts off basically with a nice basic introduction to Google AdWords for those of you less familiar with, with search advertising. Um, that helps a lot also at the beginning of the course because you're about to start the search simulation exercises. Um, so, so, so that's very important. But we do have a, another webinar that introduces you to the search simulation again. Um, you need to watch that webinar before you start the search simulation, otherwise it, it becomes very difficult. Um, success factors for sites and apps taught by a colleague of mine, Rob Thurner. Very, very interesting. You know, should, should, should you provide an app? Can you do what you want to do with an app um, on, on a mobile site? Nowadays, you can do a lot more on a mobile site than you need before to do with an app and so on and so forth. So lots of design considerations um, behind that. Remarketing and machine learning. Um, Clark Boyd, another colleague of mine, absolutely brilliant, um, fascinating guy, super smart and very eloquent and, and, and teach you some really interesting stuff in that regard. He also runs the webinar using digital assistance to enhance customer um, connection. So the whole sort of movement of these sort of um, devices in our homes, listening to us, responding to us, and that the pros and cons of that in this sort of more and more connected world. And how, as a marketer, you can, um, you know, get get into that top search result so that you can be the the answer to a question on a Siri or or whatever it might um, be. That's quite tricky, right? Um, then you'll have introduction to the social um, um, search, uh, the, the social advertising platform. Uh, we also have a live webinar from Professor Rogers, which is absolutely fantastic. A week before that, we'll ask you for questions so he can answer your questions directly. Um, then we finish up making data-led decisions with Google um, Analytics run by Josh Whiten. One of the course leads is directly for this course, but he also runs two of these webinars because, again, like um, everyone else, he is super, a super smart guy. Um, and then we have the social media advertising um, uh, webinar uh, another colleague of mine, Pilar, um, she, she, she runs that and provides some insights in terms of advertising on Facebook and so forth. So some really interesting live sessions with lots of practical application, hopefully. Um, these are the assignments that you need to complete. You need to complete nine assignments um, to, to complete, um, no, sorry, I misspoke. There are nine assignments um, for the course. You need to complete seven of the nine to get the certificate for the course. I mean, obviously we encourage you to complete all nine, that would be fantastic, um, but you need to complete seven for the course. The, of the nine assignments, two of them are the simulation assignments, the, um, the um, search, 
um, advertising simulation and the social media advertising simulation. That's two points. There are five assignments related to um, the, you know, each of the core strategies. So access, engage, customize, connect, and collaborate. And then in week one, you have an assignment, customer advocacy and customer networks, very straightforward onboarding assignment, gets you really used to how to submit assignments, the platform and so on and so forth. The questions asked are straightforward, basically asking, have you ever given a customer review, um, you know, on whether it's an Amazon product or whatever it might be, and then looking at your own business or where you work and what its customer networks looks like. So hopefully that, having a, a, an assignment like that at the beginning gets you used to uh, the process. Then right at the end, the, the final assignment metrics of measurement, um, looking at different metrics and how you how you use those metrics in again in your own business and so forth. Right? Um, so those are the nine assignments of which you need to complete seven. Um, for all assignments, you have until the end of the course to submit the assignments. Um, I would say that's not very smart learning. You should try to keep up the pace and submit the assignments in the week that they're offered and the week that they're due. Generally, um, if an assignment's week one, you see at the beginning of the week, you need to submit it by the end of the week, something um, like that, right? Um, and when, when the assignments are reviewed, you either get an incomplete or a complete uh, for, for your success at completing the assignment. For each of the core strategy assignments, um, if you complete that assignment, the end of the week that it's offered, then um, you will get feedback, uh, or at least your assignment will be reviewed ahead of the debrief for that assignment. And the debrief is led by your course leader. So for instance, if you did um, sign up for the IKEA um, <clears throat> um, strand or, or case for, for, for this particular course, I'd be your course leader. And before I do the IKEA access um, strategy debrief, I will read all the assignments submitted at that time to help create that debrief session. Right? Um, so that's the um, idea um, behind that. So these assignment debriefs that we run, um, are, are managed by each of the course leaders. So for this current course, and I'm hoping for, 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 for your next course, it's myself, Josh, and Demetrius, um, three course leaders. Um, should say three case studies, I apologize for that. That's a terrible typo on my part. Um, IKEA, Hilton Hotels, and Lego um, are our three case studies. And you have five assignment um, debriefs um, to attend. Now, like any of the webinars, and the assignment debriefs and the simulation office hours, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, these are live sessions, but not everyone can attend a live session because of work commitments, time of day, various other things. All sessions are recorded and available within a, a day of the session being undertaken. That's kind of the goal, right? 24 hours. You should be able to then go and watch the recording of that session. So um, if it, and, and the case, if you miss a session or whatever, you can go back and watch it. it it's, everything is recorded uh, and so forth. So hopefully that um, becomes helpful. So I think I've explained this already, but your course leader will review all assignments submitted one week ahead, and then we prepare our debriefs um, and and, and, and present them. And I, I love the debriefs. And quite frankly, I think as students, you should consider the debriefs your classroom time, right? So um, we address that particular assignment, but then we can address any issues that you may have as you're navigating and going through, um, through the course, right? The discussion topics for the course. So most weeks, each week, there will be a discussion topic thread that we will be related to, to the content that you're learning and, 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 and going through that particular module or that particular week, right? So right from the get-go, we have an introduce yourself discussion thread. And again, just like the onboarding assignment, it's designed to just get you familiar with the discussion boards and so forth, so you feel comfortable doing that and engaging. And I would say there's lots of learning that goes on on the discussion threads, and this is really where you can get exposure to digital marketing in other regions of the world, right? As, as people um, 
talk about their particular experiences, but their experiences may come from very different cultural contexts. So I think that's very interesting. My favorite of these discussion threads comes up in week four for content marketing, right? So on the engage strategy, one thing that we discuss is a content marketing strategy for a particular brand. Um, and the discussion thread will ask, what are some of the pieces of content marketing that you've seen that you've found particularly engaging? So this idea of viral marketing and, and, and so on and so forth. And there's always some really great examples on that particular discussion thread. My favorite, I think, or the one that always remains very vivid to me is um, Claude Van Damme and the Volvo trucks. And I won't go into detail, but you could Google it. Um, it's a very interesting piece of content. A little bit about the search simulations. So we run these through Stukent. Um, they are our search simulation provider, and um, that's very good. The um, search, sorry, they, they're the simulation provider for, for both simulations. The search marketing simulation, basically the premise is um, you are running an ad campaign, a digital ad campaign for Kent's Camera Castle. And, and the, the, the idea is Kent's Camera Castle is a local camera business. It had a very strong brand in its local area. And, but now with the development of digital, it's seeing its market shrinking. So it now has to adapt its marketing strategy to digital. And the one thing it's deciding to do is to run search ads. So you have a particular budget. I think it's like 5,000 a, a, a week or, or a session. Um, it's, it's on a weekly thing, but I, I forget the time scale. It could be the time scale could be a, a month or so at a time. But anyway, the point is, um, you you run the ads, and um, you know you have to decide what keywords you're optimizing for. You have to come up with the particular ad campaign, and then you have to design the landing page and so forth, just as you would if you were running a Google AdWords campaign. And then you get the results. You can see the feedback, see how you're doing, and so on and so forth. You complete three rounds um, for for your participation in that particular piece of the course. And then again, for the social media simulation, it's a similar idea. Um, in this case, you're, you're working for a um, leather bag making company or, or something like that. And um, your, your, your campaigns are now um, run, running sort of um, pieces of content over the different social media channels, different times a day and so on and so forth, experimenting that sort of agile marketing type idea, look at your feedback, adjust, look at your feedback, adjust sort of idea. And again, competing with your fellow classmates and with your course leader. That's Michael Tominaga. Doesn't matter whether which case study you're on, you're all going to do the, so the, the simulations. They're sort of independent. So Michael runs that. Um, he has introductory webinars for each of the um, simulations. He has office hours, two office hours for each simulation. So when, once you've tried it, if you want to get feedback, if you want to see how you can do better, you go to the office hours and, and ask questions and so on and so forth. And the, you, you also, if you're having problems, the support tickets through the platform. Um, and also there is discussion threads for each of the simulations um, so that you can um, post your results, ask questions, look at other people's results, try to learn from um, each uh, other, hopefully. Okay, these are from surveys of people that have taken the course um, and, you know, not to um, sort of you know, sort of blow our own trumpets or anything like that. But I mean, I'm really passionate about this stuff. I really enjoy this teaching environment. I think it works out really well. Um, and these are surveys, again, from those that have completed the course. So more than 90% would recommend the course to a friend or a coworker, which is very good. They sound very good anyway. And not forgetting, these are only people that responded to the survey, right? So there might be some um, response bias there. You found the guest speakers and course leaders debriefs most effective. Um, so that's very good for course leaders, I suppose. Um, you particularly appreciated the simulation of, uh, simulation exercises and Professor Rogers' live session. So the point is, lots of the different um, teaching elements that we offer um, um, get good um, feedback. And here's some direct feedback um, from some of those surveys. The importance of having a strategy without one you are aimless. The importance of metrics, you can't manage what you don't measure. The mechanics of digital advertising through the simulation. I found this very interesting and it's something that I'm putting into practice. That's key, right? 
if you're taking this course and you're working simultaneously, you can start applying what you're learning directly into where you're working, right? So hopefully that, you know, we, we get students that are doing that, right? So hopefully that, that makes sense. Not focus on the solution before you identify the audience, your goals, and what you want to accomplish with your marketing. The content on social media really does make a difference. Simple presence is not enough. To make metrics count, one has to establish their goals first because otherwise the amount of data is overwhelmed. Digital media is a means to engage the customer, not at the end. So again, this is just some feedback from prior course participants. Of the emeritus courses, I would say that we get relatively high um, overall feedback, which is great. And we get lots of participants too. So. Um, in, in some courses, it could be upwards of two, three hundred participants. So your opportunity to engage and learn from lots of different people from all around the world is, is, is there. We, have, we use the learning platform Canvas. Um, and in the introductory webinar, which I run for the course, I will give a live demonstration. Always giving something live demonstration can be a bit fraught with risk, but I try to give a live demonstration of how the platform works and what you need to do and so on and so forth. So hopefully that becomes quite clear. A few quick recommendations. It is great to stay up to date. As I mentioned earlier, if you can do the assignments on time and move through the program, you will learn more out of the program. That all said, some of us have to travel. Some of us have hiccups along the way. As long as you complete seven out of the nine assignments by the end of the course, you will um, get your certificate. You will also have access to all of this material for a year from the beginning of the course date. Um, so you can go back and re-watch Professor Rogers' video. You can go back and re-look at all the webinars and so on and so forth um, after the course is completed. Um, so hopefully that pr proves quite useful. The only thing you can't do, I believe, is submit assignments after the course is completed. But who wants to do that if you don't need to, right? Um, interact with classmates um, and emeritus team, so join the discussion platform. Um, that's very important. And also, if you're struggling along the way, make sure you reach out either to the support team if it's a technical issue or to your course leader like myself, Josh or Demetrius if it's a, a, a course material issue or to Michael if it's a uh, simulation issue, right? We are here to make you successful um, in the course, right? That's kind of our, our goal. And quite frankly, that's what we're, we're paid for, right? And, and put this stuff into practice. So again, as you're working and, and taking the course simultaneously, try to use some of the you know, assignment insights and, and bring that to your, uh, your work. I think that's um, very good. Some really quick logistics, and then I'll um, hopefully take additional questions that, that you may have. Um, the program basically begins um, April or March 10th. You have up until March 9th to apply, which I think is absolutely fantastic, um, given that I've done a lot of work in the MBA admission space, and you have to apply about a year before, before um, you, you, you can start. You can either pay in full, pay in two installments, or pay in three installments. All the detail is right there on this particular slide. And I believe you will get access to this slide deck after um, this, this session if you need to look at all that um, in a little bit more detail. That's your certificate. So hopefully, um, again, you embark on this course, you complete this course. 85% of you will. And that's our goal is to move that number up. And we're here um, to help you. And I hope you get a little bit from this presentation that I'm truly passionate, one, about this subject matter. I love it. But two, about the way this course is delivered. And I'm very proud to have been part of um, the Emeritus team now um, for, for a year and a half, teaching in this format, teaching this particular course. I shouldn't say teaching as a course leader for this particular um, course. So I will now open it up for more questions. So if I've missed your question, if I haven't covered your concern, if you could please either go to the chat box now and, and resubmit your, your question or your concern, or go to the Q&A and do the same. 
that would be um, great. I'm going to look at the Q&A now and see what um, questions I might be able to answer. Is there specific content in applying these concepts to small business and non-profits? Um, yes, um, Kathleen, um, whilst we don't do a lot of case studies directly in the modules, um, you know, Professor Rogers' particular content um, relative to small business um, or non-profit, I think you will find the material does apply uh, directly. Um, so hopefully um, you're not put off by that. I know we have participants on the course um, from small businesses and from nonprofits, and um, I, I do think they have done um, particularly um, well. So hopefully that helps. Um, Gabrielle, I have complex working hours. Will you be available 24-7? We're available 24-7, Gabrielle, but I think if you, you absolutely should expect an answer within 24 hours. Um, of a question that you might submit through email, Canvas, or whatever it might be. But, you know, on a Friday night at 11 o'clock at night, you probably don't want to hear my answer at that point. It's probably better for me to wait till Saturday morning. Um, but yes, um, we are available um, in, in a very sort of frequent manner, I, I should say. Will this course work for someone who's currently looking for a job, have a lot of background in PR and writing, but no formal digital training? Yes, I, I think why not, right? You're going to be learning stuff, which is great, and you're going to get a certificate um, from, from Columbia Business School which I, and, and Emeritus, which I think has to be helpful in that job search um, process. On top of that, you know, the Emeritus platform, once you've completed the course, may prove useful um, for, for, for further networking and so on and so forth. So yeah, hopefully this course is useful um, in that regard. Alexandra, um, starting on 10th of March, does it mean that the first week ends um, on the 15th of March? I'm not sure what that means. Each week, um, it might start on a Wednesday and it might be Wednesday to what, Tuesday or it might be um, Thursday to Wednesday. I'm not exactly sure what day of the week it starts, but each module is seven days. Um, so hopefully that answers um, that question. Um, let me see if I'm seeing any more questions. Uh, please end the present. Um, okay. Um, are there any more questions? I think I've covered the questions that I'm seeing. Um, let me see if I can see any more. Can you speak a little bit more about the potential to build a network that leads into real world? Well, Peyton, there's really, I, <clears throat> all I can say ab ab about that is, you know, lots of course participants sort of share. Um, their sort of LinkedIn profiles with each other, sort of build networking that way. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, we have a LinkedIn group um, for those once they've completed the course. That helps, I think, with, with, with networking um, and, and so forth. And, and again, the Emeritus platform, once you've completed, um, you have access to. I'm not active on the Emeritus platform personally, so I can't tell you... Um, honestly how how successful that has been and i and i'm not avoiding it. it it might well be very successful it's just not something that i've needed to to, to participate directly but um, surely that should prove um useful too um i think at the end of the day um you know to participate in the course you really want to be learning what we're teaching i think that should be fundamental in terms of your decision to choose to participate um, I do think the content is fantastic um, and, and so on and so forth. So hopefully others uh, would agree with that, but that should be fundamental. And then these other things should be helpful and uh, additional benefits of um, taking the course. Um, yeah, ho hopefully I'm honest and transparent. So I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and actually that's sort of fundamental for digital marketing today, right? Brands have to be honest and transparent. Otherwise, um, certainly, as we talk about in their connect strategy, it is not good. Um, if people start saying things about their real experience with the brand, that's not reflective of what the brand messaging um, is. So be cautious of that. And that's something we teach um, directly, obviously, in the program. OK, any other questions? Um, what I will say, um, if, if I'm not seeing any other questions, what I will say is, again, I'm passionate about this stuff. I hope that passion comes across. I also hope um, that I'm able to give you a good sense of what this course is about, what we're going to cover, um, and whether it's appropriate um, for you. Um, but, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's a great um, learning, learning opportunity. 
Um, okay, so we do have another question. How often is the content of the course reviewed to include new trends, technologies? For instance, I don't see any reference to TikTok on a social media platform. That's a very, very good um, observance on your part, I think, an insight, is how do we keep this course up to date? So, you know, Professor Rogers is video content. That does go through some um, form of, of renewal and update. That process might be sort of on, on a bit of a yearly basis or something like that, right? And what you'll, you'll, you'll note um, through his content is some of the case studies are a little dated, but they're very relevant. So the frameworks from the case studies are real and last, right? Um, but so, some of the examples might be a little bit dated, but I've just gone through the process with Emeritus in providing feedback on all the video content on areas that I'm suggesting that we should provide some updates. So that then goes through the Emeritus process then back to Columbia Business School and new um, videos then get produced. How quickly they get produced, I don't absolutely know, but we have this um, process in place. It, you're very correct, we don't currently have a video on TikTok. Um, you know, from IKEA's perspective, I think TikTok could be quite an exciting platform actually as, as people do goofy things in, in Ikea stores on those, those short video loops. Um, so yeah, so some exciting things to come. Um, but, but yeah, keeping everything up to date is potentially a challenge. So we have that process to do it. The other thing I would say is in the webinars, so when, you know, let's say, for example, Clark Boyd's talking about what's going on in, in you know, you know, with listening devices and what's going on in machine learning and various other things. That's super up to date. All that, you know, the, the majority of that stuff on the, on the webinar side really makes the, the content very current, and very contemporary. Um, and that's one of the roles of the webinars is to bring um, practitioners talking about stuff that's happening right now and more futuristic in nature. So hopefully that helps, Luke, but you do make a very good point and it's really important to try to keep things a little bit more contemporary. Um, okay, so I am going to wrap things up now, I think. I think we have covered everything. So in order to do that, um, I have to end the presentation um, by saying certain things, otherwise they won't know this presentation has ended and they won't stop um, recording. So. I'm going to end the thing, the presentations. I say we look forward to seeing you when the course starts. Thank you. That's presuming you will sign up. Um, and, and really, I hope you do, and I hope you really enjoy it. And thank you very much for your attention. I truly um, appreciate your spending an hour with us today. Best of luck, everybody.